So Google and Gemini has just released this new robotics 1.5 model, which is pretty much just a visual language model that can be used for robotics, finding different types of objects. You can ask it to draw bounding boxes. You can find the exact points. You can tell it to remove an item, what item should be removed to fit in another item and so on. And this video here, I'm basically just going to walk you through. They have a very nice notebook. We're going to see how we can run it in a Google Colab notebook, a few examples, how you can use it on your own, and then also just some very cool results. So this is pretty much just to release the documentation they have. So usually they have like the, the Gemini models. Now they also have the robotics tab here. So Gemini Robotics ER 1.5. And it's basically just like a visual language model, but it's outputting structured output with bounding boxes or points and then also a label for the different objects that we are detecting. So this is a pretty good example with a bowl, bag of peanuts, toy tomato, paper bag, uh, toy pepper, toy banana, bread of slides and so on. And it also returns the point here. What we're also going to see is some other um, things as well where we can do tracking in videos and we're going to create multiple different videos where we're going to build use cases and all that stuff around it as well so you can point it to an object so you can specify specific objects that you're only interested in that it should pick up and then again you can have like a robot arm act like getting mapped to these points here they're detecting you can combine it with a depth map but also just in relation to the table that it's on these are some pretty uh, cool use cases so let's say that you have like the the corners of the table you know the real world measurements of that one you know the robot's position with respect to your corners and then you have the position here on the board then you can actually just tell the robot with a vlm with audio like with natural language or just prompt it with text as well so here we have an example of tracking objects in a video so pen on a desk pen on a desk here and it tracks the points while the robots are actually like moving it around we just need to feed it in a base prompt and then also the structured output that we want with our points and also the labels. We can probably get it to return a, a confidence score as well. But if we scroll up at the at the top here, you can go to try it in Google AI Studio. We can also take a look at the different examples they have. So here in Google AI Studio, we can test out all the different models that they have. We're going to use Python to get all the things rolling. Let's open up the robotics cookbook. We go to the GitHub repository. And then they act like have this notebook just going through the different code snippets that they had in there. But the main stuff is pretty much just a last language model or an API call to Gemini. So let's just open up this one here. They have tons of different notebooks on the left side. You can go and check out if you interested in some of the other stuff. So here we have the Gemini robotics, video understanding, system instructions, they're very good at doing video understanding as well and tracking across videos, doing transcriptions, all of these things. So here we have the notebook. All we have to do is just connect to it. Then we need to set up our Google API key. And how we can do that is that we go over here to our keys in the left side. So it just went in created this Google API key. Let's give it access in this notebook. There we go. And now we should have access to this API key from Google. So that's everything they have to do. Now we just need to pip install it. We already have our environment running. We will pip install Google Gen AI. The rest of the stuff should pretty much just be pre-installed in here. The JSON or the, the helper functions here, we don't really need uh, to take a look too much into that. It's just how we can generate the points, HTML for visualizations and all that stuff, how we can parse the, parse the JSON file, extract the, the lines and extract the points and all that from our actual like, response that we get back from the last language model. So now let's declare the imports, import all the different modules and libraries that we need. And then we can grab this prompt template. So determine the bounding box of the object and point to the part of the object then find the angle between that would be suitable grasp for uh, grasp angle at this point, return the answer in this format. So we have bounding box 2D, we want a label, we want a point, we want a label, and then we also want it to estimate an angle. So this is a pretty cool one. We can see how detailed it can act like be, and then you can feed this directly into your manipulator or your robotics arm. 
point all prompt template. This is just point to all object in the image, return answer in JSON list dictionary with key point uh, with keys point and labels. Here we can also have the point prompt tom template. So yeah, let's just hit go on these ones here. It will just save these templates. You can modify them to your own use cases or if you wanted to return other stuff again you can see this angle here is pretty arbitrary you can probably have the have it estimate the distance between the two objects as well that could be a very cool uh, key to put in here as well so we'll set up a google api key we just need to grab the model id if a new model comes out or it's not in preview any longer you just have to delete this part or at some point it will probably come out with two 2.5 and so on we just swap it out there and that's pretty much it. So here we're going to have just our client to set up. We generate the content. So we set up the model ID and the contents. Are you there? And then we're just going to print the text response, the text uh, field that we get back from our API response. So this is also going to be pretty straightforward. There we go. It's pretty fast. It just took a few hundred milliseconds. So yes, I'm here. How can I help you? So now we need to grab an image and then we can get a resized image of that image because these models here, they can't take an arbitrary image size. If it's too big, it will downscale it. It can even only understand that. So it will downscale it here to S image 800 by 800. So make sure that when you're doing this here, you have to scale the coordinates, the bounding box coordinates back again. So this is probably one thing that you might fall into if you're getting problems, you think the, the AI models are just hallucinating or something like that. It's most likely because you're not rescaling your points back again, if you want it on your full image frame. So to say that you have your coordinates with respect to an image, which is 800 by 800, because that's what Gemini thinks the model dimensions are or the image dimensions, you get the response back. Then you actually need to take the difference that you have downscaled your image with, and then you can project that up again into the global reference system. So it's pretty much just as if you're doing tiling windows or Saatchi. So here we can call the Gemini Robotics. All we have to do is just call the model ID, the contents with our image and our prompt. We can just feed it in like this. It will be the same as if it's a video, we can just feed in a video. They will take care of all of it on the API side. So let's run this one here. Let's grab a few images. So they also have examples where you can just download images. You can also use your own images, but let's just test out the ones that they have. So point to no more than 10 items in the image. Let's just go with five. That's the only thing we have to modify. Now we'll just get our points and our labels back. We got an error, parse JSON is not defined. So we didn't run this block of code up at the top for helper functions. There we go. The parser function is just going to extract the JSON inside our string because it's going to rep uh, send back a string. You remember we had this, hello, how can I help you? Or yes, I'm here, how can I help you? It's just a string. And we can read this as a dictionary when it's just a string. So we need to parse it into a, a, a dictionary. So we have a JSON object, we can take the point and we can take our labels. So now you'll be able to rerun this it's pretty much instant. And there we go. We even got the visualization now. So we got the five items. It's even a pretty nice visualization. So that was the HTML visualization that they were doing. And you can see them directly inside of Google Colab here. This is the other one pointing to defined objects. So you can just point it to whatever like a bread of slice here. Not really too interesting. Point to all instances of an object. If there's more, also not too it's pretty cool that you can do it. So if you want to find specific objects, you want to sort them with a robot or whatever use case you can come up with. It doesn't have to be robots. It can just be any computer vision application that you're doing where you don't need real time processing and you're just processing single images or even just batch images, single images, like just use the Gemini models instead of training object detection models, set up all the data, set up all the pipeline. We can do everything with just an API call here. So let's try to see if we can find some other cool stuff here, but it's pretty straightforward. You can go through it yourself. The Cola notebook will be down in the description. So object detection and bounding boxes. Let's try to see if we can get some, some bounding boxes. That's a pretty cool use case. You probably grab this image here first. Let's see what we get back. 
There we go, we got a paper bag, and it even gets like the, the handles, bag of peanuts, we have the green bowl, we have a toy tomato, it even just says that it's a toy tomato and not a real tomato, slice of white bread, slice of brown bread, let's see some of the other images that are returned, game board, let's try to grab this one, so I'll just show you how we can modify it, so instead we grab this image, be the same as just this, uh, limit to 25 objects, let's see what it's saying here, if an object is multiple times, no return mask, let's just try to see what we get back. You could specify, so here we can see we get a pink piece, wooden ring piece, let's say that we only want the I want the ring pieces limit to let's say three objects because we have four here see if it's actually able to do that that'll be pretty cool it found four so limit to three objects so you always have to do some prompt fine tuning when you're actually like solving these problems uh, might not even get it here no ring pieces it still gets four so you can of course run a limit and all that, it, it's not really a good use case, it's just fun to play around with, usually you just want to find all the objects that you're looking for, but instead of like training an update detection model to find these pieces, you can just have Gemini do it. Here we're saying that it shouldn't return mask or anything, but you can actually just swap it out instead of the, the bounding box 2D, you can also ask it to return polygons. You will of course have to set up your own utility function to draw the polygon zone with the mask, but it can also return polygons around the objects. So we'll see here we have some trajectories, so basically just how objects are moving. Tons of examples in here that you can go through. They have segmentation here, as I just mentioned. So again, mask, and we have the data here. So here is actually like going to return a PNG mask and not the actual like polygon zone. I'm very sure that it can return just the points in the polygon zone, but it might be better to just take the PNG mask and then you can just mask it for the different objects that you're detecting. Now I might have lost the other one. So here we can see the trajectory. So this is how it's, it should move the robot arm. So we should take it from here and go all the way down here. So we can print the trajectory. Of course, it's still in 2D space. So if you want to do this in 3D space, you need to do some mapping with your robotics or have a depth map on top of it sitting as well, doing some estimations on how it can pick it up. But just visually from the eyes of the robot or the camera, it looks like a pretty good trajectory to take to pick up this red pin. This is pretty awesome. Like, there's so many use cases out there. Like, the only mo the models are only going to get better. They're going to get smarter. You can probably run them locally at some point as well. Here you can see the total processing time around 14 seconds. So it's really good for use cases where you can just send an image. You can do the planning. You can execute your plan. It's not for real time update detection, high high speed update counting, tracking systems, and so on. But there's tons of use cases out there where you can just do validation on single images, OCR scanning document scanning, combine it with AI agents and all of that. So it's pretty cool. Go ahead and check it out. Everything will be down in the description. And stay tuned because these models here are only going to get better and the use cases are limitless pretty much. See you in the next video guys. Until then, happy learning.